Okay, let's now look at the forward kinematics for an articulated robot. And this is an R, R, R structure, so it's Revolute, Revolute, Revolute. Um, they're very widespread, they're very good general purpose robots. They've got good ability to get into workspaces and not take up too much of a big footprint, footprint in order to do so. Um, it's also the basis of what you've got for the same smart arm, which we never really got around to using, but uh, it's obviously got some similar um, features to the human arm, right? So it's got a sort of a shoulder like we've got. It, obviously, it's at its base, and it's got an elbow. Um, and, you know, if we're only sticking here to the first three degrees of freedom, that's as far as we almost want to go. So it's got, you know, we've got one, two, three degrees of freedom. Normally, you'd stick on the end something like a spherical wrist, so you could get, you know, this could get you to any location in space, but you just put a spherical wrist on so you can actually get to um, use a, t a tool or an, um, some kind of uh, end point uh, mechanism that could be orientated um, at different orientations in space as well. So let's look at the coordinate frame of this, of this system then. Well, first of all, we notice it's got three axes of rotation. The first one is vertical. Second one then is um, kind of horizontal, if it would be horizontal if we were looking at it from the side. And the third one is in the same sense as the second one. Let's think about then now um, how we'd put the frames on. So as always, we're putting in Z as being along the axis of rotation. So that's going to go along the vertical um, axis here. And like I said, it's nice to have X going in the direction of the arm, uh, leaving us with no alternative but to put Y going into the page. Second one, basically, we have to put the, again, the Z axis such that we're aligning with the rotational axis um, of, the, of, of the joint. So Z, in this case, is coming out um, and it, it goes basically along the rotational axis theta 2. Um, X is pointing forward again, which is good along basically along the joint, and Y is basically nothing left. There's nowhere else it can go except up. Um, on the next link, then we have a very similar uh, kind of frame structure. We have again Z coming out of the page along the axis of rotation, X again pointing along the link, and Y going up again. And finally, of course, we want to be able to say something about the actual end effect to position. So there is a little bit more of a link A4 after this um, theta 3 joint. So we need to put another final frame on there so we can actually work out what the end point's going to be in the frame of the base. So now let's go through them in pairs and come up with the homogeneous transformations which map between these particular sets of frames. So we've done the first one before, but we'll do it again anyway. Um, again, just looking at those two frames, you can see that in order to get from, you know, what do we have to do to the base frame to get it to be the same as frame one? And as you can see, it's going to be a rotation around X because X is basically staying in the same direction. Um, and it's going to be a positive direction, a rotation around X of, um, of 90 degrees such that Z zero comes out and points in the same way as z1 right and we can if we want to we can put an intermediate frame and then consider it at that particular point <clears throat> so we see then either way it's a rotation around around x of 90 degrees in order to bring um, our z0 to point in the same direction as z1 and everything else lines up as well right so that's nice we can just put in um, the rotation matrix, a three by three, of a rotation around the x axis. So that means x stays the same, and then we've got rotation terms for y and z. Um, again, you could just look at it by inspection. You see x is x, right? So basically, the, the new x or back back from the x we want to get from the, from the base is going to be one lot of the x that we've got from frame one. Um, Y two Y one basically what well, that's saying is it's it's we the, the, what we want to map back to um, is basically minus Z one right so there's a minus one there and as you can see what we want getting back for Z um, ends up being what we had for for, for Y so we have a, a a one there to pick out the Y value um, but again you can just do it looking at the sign 
and cosine and put them into the rotation matrix in order to get the actual values out. <laughs> so after we've actually done the rotation to align the axes, we've also got to um, account for the translation between the two um, origins on the two frames. So we can see that in order to get from, from the base frame to the frame up here, uh, we've actually got to translate. We've got to translate along Z by A2, A1 and we've got to translate along X by A2. So A2 along X, nothing along Y, and A1 along Z, right? That's all fine. And finally, we've got to account for the fact we can actually rotate around um, this first axis by theta one. So that's gonna be a rotation around the Z axis by theta one. So we put in the three by three rotation matrix for that. And of course, the next thing we do <coughs> Um, is to put them all into homogeneous transformation format so we can just multiply them at the end. So again, rotation of 90 degrees, in goes the 3 by 3 component um, into the upper uh, left side of the trans uh, homogeneous matrix. Zero, zero, zero is the translation component. Translation in um, X and Z, we can just put in that as a single homogeneous transformation, one, 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 basically means that that's the identity rotation of, of zero degrees and so it's not rotating it's just shifting by a2 in x and a1 in z and again we put in our rotation around the z-axis in homogeneous format the, the three by three component going up here and there's no offset and then to get the overall homogeneous transformation from frame one to frame zero you multiply first rotation by the translation by the second rotation, right? So we just multiply these out and we get the formula there. Right, now we're going to do, going to frame um, two to one, and we see that this is quite nice and easy. So first of all, the frames point in the same direction. So there's no, nothing to align, there's no rotations to deal with. But what we can see is we've got a shift, um, and it's a long, a translational shift in X of A3. So we need to move um, from here to here, from, from, from the Z, well, from frame one to frame two, we'll need to have a shift of um, A3 that we have to account for. Um, and there's going to be a rotation as well around this axis. We can see that there's going to be a rotation around, it's going to be because around Z, because we always put rotation axes around Z, by theta two. So we've got a rotation around Z by theta two that we've got to put in. So we've got two components we've got to deal with it. We've got the translation, let's put that into homogeneous format. Again, identity matrix for the rotational component, there isn't one, and it's just shifting in, in X by A3. Rotation around Z, so we put in the two, three by three um, rotation matrix for that, and we put it into the upper uh, left side of the homogeneous, uh, homogeneous matrix with no offset component, because it's not moving anything else. And then we just multiply those out in that order. So starting off a translation multiplied by the rotation at the uh, at the joint and we end up with a nice simple solution there and then we've got the final bit to do which isn't uh, going to be very difficult um, two frames again no rotation so that's nice and easy um, again well, there's no rotation between the frames I should say we haven't got to the the, the theta three yet um, also then we have a translation again it's going to be within x and it's going to be of value a4 and then we have to account for the rotation again around, um, in this case, um, the Z axis for theta three. So that's another rotation around Z by, and this time by theta three. So once again, gets a bit tiresome, but we have to put those into the homogeneous transformation matrices. So this is the translation unit, um, identity component for the rotation. And it's just a shift in, in X of A4. Um, then we've got the rotation around the z-axis by uh, theta 3. And then we put that into a homogeneous format. And then we can multiply those together in that order. First the translation, then the rotation around the joint. And we end up with the translation uh, homogeneous transformation matrix. Now, of course, again, we know that we've, we actually want to do is we want to map from the end point, which is frame, th uh, frame 3, to, to the base, which is frame 0. So we want... Um, transformation matrix uh, three to zero but we know we can build this up from going three to two two to one one to zero so we just have to multiply out the homogeneous matrices we got for the three linkages 
and multiply those out. Um, again, if you were doing this in a kind of exam condition, I wouldn't even expect you to go further than that because it starts getting horrendous. Um, this was just using MATLAB and using the simplify command. And again, like I said, I, I always say, if you can actually look at the, uh, the results, um, it's always good to check that the endpoint you're getting here, right? This is the endpoint, it's going to be these three, that one, oops, one, two, three components. Um, do they actually line up to where you expect the endpoint to be?